on issues raised at prior council meetings. None at this time, Madam Clerk. Special event applications, Leisha. Council. First on the agenda tonight is the St. Patrick's Day in Kennedy Park. This is separate from the parade. Um, Cross and Orange is sponsoring this event from 11 to 5 on March 11. Next is the city's annual Easter pageant on April 1st. On April 7th and 8th, the request is for a dunk tank to be in uh, Bradley Park. This is in conjunction with an event that's happening at Convention Hall named uh, Catsbury Park. National Victims Rights Week celebration will be held on April 11th in Springwood Park. New Jersey's big pinwheel garden um, a state agency is requesting to do an observation to acknowledge April as Child Abuse Prevention Month and they will do a photo op with pinwheels on the uh, beach and they will be immediately removed after that. Earth Day Green, Earth Day Green Fair again is a city event which would be held in Library Square Park on April 21st. The restaurant tour sponsored by the Chamber of Commerce on April 29th. Haitian Heritage Celebration um, is requesting to use the Senior Center for their event on May the 12th. Fair with the Community um, is Marathana Church requesting to use Sunset Park on July 14th. <laughs> Asbury Park Volleyball Beach Tournament. Uh, the date has been changed. This would actually be held on July 28th with the rain date of August 18th on um, North Beach. Serve 24, Jersey Shore Dream Center would like to do this in Springwood Park on August 11th and 12th. And lastly, we have Doggles Day Out, which would be held on September 15th in Bradley Park, Rain or Shine. And for this particular one, I'm just asking that the date be approved. Um, the applicant needs to come in and meet with the Special Events Committee about the logistics. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to presentations by the City Planner, Michelle Alonzo, regarding activating the Transportation Center. Good evening, council members and members of the public. Tonight I am presenting to you some preliminary ideas to improve the transportation center. This has been discussed um, myself, the transportation planner Mike Manzella. We've been um, coming up with ideas on <laughs> how to improve, improve the transportation center. And we looked at it um, three ways or we're pre I'm presenting you tonight three um, three three things that we would like to push forward uh, to to make it a place a place right when I say a place more than just a place where people buy tickets for New Jersey transit and and come in and out to get the train and part of our idea first, we have a few ideas with this. One is there's um, retailers who may want to break into coming into the city, but may not be able to find a space in the downtown or the waterfront. And the other thought process that Mr. Manzel and I had is it would be great if you can buy food at the transportation center but considering we own it and it would be Elise's responsibility to do things like venting if they were going to serve hot food. So one of the solutions we had thought about that is to bring in food trucks. And then the other aspect of it is the 
bricks and mortar physical aspect of it where we would like to improve the look of the transportation center and we were hoping to do so through public art public art on the inside the outside and also to have ex hopefully hanging from the ceiling on the inside I had included for you pictures of the transportation center both inside and out as is today so you know it's um the exterior, I, I gave you photos partially to show that um, walls where we can do murals to show on the exterior where, exterior where food trucks can go and on the interior so you can see the space and how the space is being utilized now. There's currently, as you know, two vendors in there. One is a taxi company in the dedicated space with its own door, and the other is a vendor who does sell some snacks and some beverages. But otherwise, it's a very large area with just a little bit of seating. And while we know that we have done we've put out bids before for the inside we one of the things we would like to do differently at this time is get the word out more extensively and basically the words I guess is try again at the concessions because I've known for repeated years we've put out to rent various spaces in the transportation center and this time we would like to to get the word out a little more and also be a little bit more flexible with the space in the center rather than bo you know boxing certain spaces we would let the vendor basically come to us and tell us how much space they and where they would like to go inside and we would do a minimum bid of twenty dollars per square foot and the other idea you know hopefully if we get more vendors on the interior is that we could have some money to be able to keep it open longer that we would have money to pay staff and also to hopefully maintain the keep the bathrooms open and as you know we'll would would solve would be a solution for some of the issues we have with with people seeking a bathroom late at night. Um, we are, we're proposing that the hours of operation also can be flexible based on the type of vendor and the vendor need. Clearly, if there's a vendor that wants to cater to a later night crowd, we can keep it open until eight o'clock. If someone wants to cater more to a morning crowd, then they could put in the hours 8 a.m. to a certain time. And again, we were proposing that this would of course not interfere with the two current vendors in there that currently have contracts with the city. When do those contracts run out? The, we were proposing, and of course this is flexible. No, the two there now. Oh, in another two years. Okay, thank you. They have three-year contracts for the inside. We were thinking these could be three-year contracts as well. And for the food trucks, we were thinking it would be a one-year as a pilot to see if that's what how that goes. Because our proposal for the food trucks is it would be two food trucks with a bid of four thousand per truck, eight thousand, and then also that cost that cost could help pay for special. And also, also contribute to keeping the bathroom the bathroom open and the bathroom clean. We were thinking about, um, well, I said part of the intent is not is to provide food service and make that to and make it a place where people would would positively gather there and eat. But it would also be another area where people could get food later at night and in an area other than the CBD. We're thinking it would, it, uh, the food trucks would be their Memorial Day to the weekend after Labor Day and that the hours of operation would be a Thursday to Saturday from 8, uh, 8 p.m. to 3 a.m. but again very flexible with that. We're also we're thinking earlier it could be earlier if, um, and explore if there's a Sunday market. This was from talking to one or two food truck vendors on what they thought the market could be. Some of them spoke that they may want to capture a, um, 
people leaving Asbury Park by train on a Sunday and that they could grab food as they get on a train. So, and also that that's some of the talk also um, of being, being able to capture Mark as people come, come off the train in Tasbury Park. So even though those were the initial hours we thought, they, there could be flexibility with the hours. And the concept, so I, there were also might be issues there. I know there were some issues raised about our food truck um, ordinance. We would treat this as we treat North Eats, where we would have tables and chairs and we would define as a restaurant because that's what we did with North Eats for North Eats to have stationary food trucks. And we would have contracts similar. In other words, you cannot just, as a food truck, you have to be there at, you know, the time specified in the contract. It can't be come and go as you, as you please because the definition will be as a restaurant. And it's a service that, again, we want to consistently provide, not that someone goes to look for the food truck to eat and it's not there. So I'd also include a small drawing that shows the possible location of the food trucks and tables that we could put out for, for people to eat. And then the last page is about public art. And when I, um, when I said murals inside, murals outside, art being hung from the ceiling where there, we used to have banners promoting Asbury Park. It could be, um, the Public Arts Commission had talked about it could be an ever-changing exhibit and could be more like a gallery space. Um, the Public Art Commission would be a partner with us in providing murals and other forms of art. And I think this is very key so that when people get off the train or even people you know, look across at the transportation center, they see a lively, inviting building that reflects who we are in Asbury Park. And so it would be wel uh, very welcoming. And I provide pictures of some station art, both in the United States and in other countries, just to show, you know, the other places have done external art on their train stations. So again, this is, you know, at, at, infant ideas at their infancy there's flexibility in in changing it or even coming up with some other ideas but again like we, especially with the success of high voltage where it is we were thinking wouldn't it be great if the transportation center can become a, a destination I think it's a great idea. I love all of it. The only thing I want to think through is the food trucks from the eight to three. Mm -hmm. I feel like drunk people from right. town crossing Maine to get food trucks. And then on the other hand, I think, oh, then we could keep all of them stationed in one place yeah. for an Uber or a Lyft or something like that. So I just want to think that one through. Yes. But other than that, I think it's brilliant. I think upgrading this bump the train station is a wonderful idea. Anything that we can do. And to make it more attractive for people who are coming into town and leaving. And then that might encourage more people to come using the trains rather than driving. As far as the conception, I have no problem with it. I mean, but you say it's in its infancy. Uh, I think it's got to be revisited with people, all volunteer, just because you're talking about many things that have moving issues and your projections of 4,000, 4,000 rent will not pay for police and DPW. You're not even close. So we'll be losing money as soon as we go out to bid. So the numbers are wrong. Uh, I'm not totally comfortable with the food trucks. I'm not totally comfortable with why would we put out the tables? Why not make the food trucks put out the tables as far as liability sake? Why should the city be liable? Well, the tables would remain there. when. Oh, they right. would? Yeah. Yes. The like one page. Oh, okay. So, so, the, the so city's going to buy those or is the two trucks going to buy those? Or, again, this is all stuff that can be worked out through details. And when you're talking about as far as putting something in the middle, I don't, everything's open. And you're right. We've gone out to bid three times and nobody's bid on anything. Maybe because we did it the wrong way. So I have no problem putting out to bid. Submit something and we'll look at it. But if you put something in the middle, and I'm just like thinking of this right now. If you put something in the middle, say a clothes store. So you, who would pay for the renovations? 
Well, the thing is, it's more the, clearly the tenant would pay for the renovations, but I don't think someone would select the middle per se. My experience with concessions and train stations is they tr kind of go towards the walls. Right, because you, right, I'd go to a corner wall because I would have to build two walls and I have security where, okay. I thought you said the center. No, I, I said that there, there would be flexibility with the square footage. I said okay. so. And we also have the recognized, you know, again, I have no problem with it. It's just got to be done the right way. Because right. Because we have some priceless antiques in there, be it the sign that was saved and refurbished, be it the right. wagon from the Asbury Park Press that, you know, cannot get destroyed. And you cannot just have a cop there. If you have a cop there, you need somebody from DPW there because. The police officer is not going to man the bathrooms. No, no. Right. So no. you need two employees during your hours of mm -hmm. operations. So no, it, it, good idea. It, it is a ugly, always has been building. The city should have never taken. Uh, if we can do something to make it better and get better use out of it, no problem. Uh, again, I just think some of your numbers that. They're, right, they're, they're when original numbers. We will, we so will, we, we, work. we will revisit those numbers, and I want to say we'll try. You know, maybe we could be off mark where maybe they're, you know, in, when push comes to shove, maybe some re retailers don't want to go in there, but I'd like to like to try again. Yeah, no problem. And again, the food truck proposal, uh, fifty fifty on it. But I mean, it's going to be one of those things again where guess what, Mister Food Truck, you bid. You're giving us a year's escrow up front because come July when you figure out you're not making money, you're not just going to pack up and leave on us. That's what food trucks do and they do it to Madison Marquette. They lose trucks during the course of the year because they're not making any money. So right. we, we have to be covered that way as far as the <coughs> company. No, very good idea. All right, thank you. View of agenda items for this evening's meeting. Resolution 2018-85 is the uh, approving special event application. Uh, 86 is an overview of taxes at 603 Lake Avenue. Uh, over page 4 is Resolution 2018-87 for 209 7th Avenue. Uh, Overpaid taxes is Resolution 2018-88 for 1307 1st Avenue. 2018-89 is to refund an overpayment of a redevelopment area bond payment and pilot charge at 601 Heck Street Unit 101. Uh, there's a place-to-place -place liquor license transfer for House of Independence, 2018-90. 2018-91 is the- Hold on one second. Cindy, what does that mean? They, um, they, it's a reduction of premises. So okay, anytime so you change your anywhere where you keep your liquor, you have to do a place to place transfer. So they have a reduction of where they're actually serving and storing liquor. Thank you. Resolution 2018-91 is releasing a performance bonds for the Asbury Hotel and a hotel and accepting the maintenance guarantee. 2018-92 um, is releasing the performance bond for South Grand Development. Um, and accepting that maintenance guarantee. Those are governed both by the municipal land use law. Resolution, uh, I'm sorry, 2893 is for the Monroe, um, releasing the performance bond and accepting the maintenance bond. Resolution 2018 94 is a resolution supporting the Sustainable New Jersey grant application for the electric, electric vehicle charging station. That is what Mr. Mantella spoke about at the last meeting. The city is applying for a $20,000 grant if this resolution passes. Resolution 2018-95 is regulations for the 2018 beach season. None of these have changed from last year other than the dates because it's a safe change. Moving on to individual resolutions. Temporary budget is Resolution 2018-96. Um, we anticipate having the introduced budget at the March 14th meeting. Uh, resolution 2018-97 is the payment of bills. Uh, resolution 2018 is awarding a contract for design, contract administration, inspection services to TNM for Bridge Street. That is the complete 
reconstruction of Bridge Street, which right now is one of the worst streets in the city. Uh, resolution 28-99 is awarding a contract to JC Contracting to replace the light at Springwood and Atkins Avenue. Resolution 2018-100 is a contract for MTV LLC for the firehouse vehicle bay door lintels. Um, this is how the doors go up and down and it needs to be replaced. I just want to point out that all these, this, this is lower than the engineer's estimate. We were estimating this would be $100,000 and the road was 28. Um, but our engineer has reviewed and talked to the company and we believe they could do it at this price. Their bid is so much lower than anybody else. Yes, um, we think they had to Oh, I did know that. Did That's that. why. So they didn't actually have to go out wide. But um, they've done good work everywhere else. The references came back great. So they can do it and save us $75,000. Uh, I'll take that. Um, resolution 2018 101 is authorizing a change order, change order number one, to the Springwood Avenue Sanitary Sewer Project. Uh, this is for additional police that New Jersey Department of Transportation acquired. Um, as you remember, we were the ones responsible for providing traffic control for this project. Um, this is the main street area of the project where DOT required us to go 24 steps. Um, resolution 2018-102 authorizes the Mosquito Control Division to conduct aerial mosquito operations at the city's request. If you don't request it, they don't do it. Resolution 2018-103 is uh, proposing a proposed amendment to the Springwood Avenue Redevelopment Plan to the Planning Board. Uh, this is just the <coughs> process. The Planning Board will hear it um, and then report back its findings to the City Council. Resolution 2018-104 is this is implementing competitive contracting to procure vendors to install electric vehicle infrastructure and to operate electric electric vehicle car share program within the city. This is also what Mr. Mansello was talking about at the last meeting two weeks ago. And then lastly, we've been awarded a $430,000 uh, <coughs> DOT grant to reconstruct the Lake Drive. Uh, we received the DOT notification on Friday. Um, and in order to try to get this project designed and shovel the ground by the end of the summer. Um, we, we added these to the agenda. This is the resolution awarding the contract for design construction, contract administration inspection services for this roadway to TNF Associates. Is there any questions? No, but that, <clears throat> excuse me. That's Deal Lake Drive from the Park Avenue Bridge to the Lock Harbor border. Yes. Thank you. Today for introduction, there's various ordinances. Uh, 2018 and 20, I'm sorry, 2018 and 2011 established salaries. Uh, we're looking to create additional positions. And again, uh, this is an assistant CFO position. Uh, during the interview process for the director of purchasing, there was an individual who we feel was better qualified as an assistant CFO. Uh, so we want to at least have this position on the books so we can, we can negotiate with that individual. Uh, the resolution 28, I'm sorry, introduction ordinance 2018 12 is towing and storage fees amendments. What this is is, is is provides better clarification for what a day is. A day is actually 12 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, there was some argument that a day would be okay. I picked up my I got my car towed to the lot at two, I picked it up at one the next day. That's 24 hours, that's a day. So we're, we're just providing clarification. Um, and then resolution, I'm oh, sorry again, ordinance 2018 13 is the grant, is the, I'm sorry, is the capital ordinance for the grant that we received from um, AOT. This will allow us to pay TNF and then reconstruct the program. Is that in a revised agenda? Yes. yes. For second reading tonight is an ordinance authorizing the naming of certain alleys. Um, that is ordinance 2018-1. 
2018-4 is the capital improvement program, which we have previously discussed. And res ordinance, second reading, 2018-5 is for $275,000. Uh, that needs to be corrected uh, on the agenda for replacing the carbon, which has reached its end of its useful life at the sewer plant. And then res resolution ordinance, 2018-6, is for second reading of amending the main street redevelopment plan to allow for music and artistic uses. So that was for twenty five thousand, not two hundred. Two seventy five. Two seventy five. Is there any questions on the ordinances for second reading? <coughs> That's it. Thank you. Move on to matters by the city council. Just a couple of things. On um, the 17th of February, there was a program in, I'm sorry, I think it was in Trenton, but at that time, the city received two awards. One was from the New Jersey Historical Commission, and it was presented to Asbury Park City, Ameri Af Asbury Park African American Amer Music Heritage Project. And that was awarded to us, recognizing an outstanding project that explores the experience of African Americans in New Jersey. And also on the same day, we received a certificate of achievement in recognition of the Asbury Park African American Music Heritage Project for outstanding contributions in documenting and preserving cultural heritage important to the state of New Jersey and our nation and that's signed by the Secretary of State. And uh, this is work that's being done by, through a grant that was given to the public library, and Jen Souter is the person who has been the manager of it, and there are a group of people who are working to document, uh, to get oral histories, and to preserve the music, musical history of Asbury Park and the contribution of African Americans. And it's going to be preserved and protected and kept uh, at the Monmouth University Museum. I would like to just thank Hope Academy for inviting me to their program yesterday. It was an outstanding program. It had a lot to do with Black History Month and all grades raised from the beginning to the end to, I think they go from three to eight. It was so outstanding that it was just like, people just start flowing in and congratulating the kids. And all the kids, what you did was they put them all around the wall. We had something similar to this last year, I think, believe the high school, about black history, people that made it in black history and people that invented black history. It was just beautiful how the kids just spoke about it. You can look at the pictures, but they uh, tap you on the shoulder and say, let me tell you this about it. And a lot of our schools don't get the congratulations that they, they need. And so I'm, I'm just saying thank you, Hope Academy. You did a fine job. Okay. That's it. The only thing I was going to say somewhat related to that is the Asbury Park School District did their Black History um, celebration at the Paramount tonight on our council meeting for the second year in a row. So maybe we could coordinate with them because I think everybody on the council would really love to go to that event as well. Um, if we could coordinate it so they don't they don't schedule it on the on the council meeting on the second or fourth Wednesday. This weekend uh, something very special is going to be happening in New Jersey so I'd like to congratulate Jalen Page, an Asbury Park student athlete. He will be the first looking to be the first wrestler from Asbury Park to be a place winner of the NJSIAA Wrestling Championship in 81 years. That's fantastic. This young man has worked very hard the past three years and is a great role model. Uh, as far as wrestling in the city, it's never been a big sport, but there's a good program at the middle school. Uh, being put on by people called Beat the Streets. And it's a program to learn wrestling and it's also you have to go to uh, tutoring. Uh, I would also like to acknowledge their coach, Coach Artizoni, and tell both 
Jalen and Matt, no matter the outcome in Atlantic City, both of you are gold medal winners in Asbury Park. Again, 81 years since anybody from Asbury Park has represented us at the state finals. So congratulations. That's all I have. Matters by the city manager. Uh, tomorrow it is anticipated that there's going to start the construction for the sewer project, uh, Springwood Avenue. Um, this is between Memorial and Maine. There will be a, a road closure from both sides of it. Uh, the street, it is a jacket door, so there will be two holes in the street as we bore through the ground underneath the, the train tracks to hook up the sewer line. Uh, local businesses will be open, uh, inclusive of high voltage and the, the corner store. We will be creating angled parking spaces in a few weeks once we can move the, the barrier back a little bit, once the equipment is in place and everything is, is um, safe. But we just want everyone to know that the, the project is going to start tomorrow um, and that the local businesses will be open. Also, in the next hopefully two or three weeks, we're going to be restarting our road programs um, as the asphalt plants get going. Uh, so that's something to look out for. The engineer report will be posted to the website the next day or two. It really just says that, you know, recommending these awards and then road programs are going to start due to, you know, it's getting more. That's all. Because Jack and Boar, that's his hope we don't find any fossils. Or the train. That's, that's I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about finding a fossil and the project be put on hold for five years. Well, the train's gone because we don't worry about transportation. So. Okay. Fred? Matters by city attorney. Nothing. All right, at this time we'll adjourn until 7 p.m. for the regular meeting. To order the regular meeting of the city council. Councilmember Chapman. Councilmember Clayton? Here. Councilmember Kendall? Present. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yep. Mayor Moore? Here. At this time, please rise for a silent prayer and moment of reflection. During this time, could we please keep our thoughts and prayers to Yvonne Banos Marino, please? Flag salute. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America. America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The annual notice was forwarded on the Asbury Park Press, the Coaster and the Star Ledger on January 4, 2018, and posted on a bulletin board the same date. All notices are on file with the city clerk. At this time, can I have a motion to open the meeting to the public, please? Move it. Move it. Second. Each member of the city, uh, each member of the public has three minutes to speak. When you come up to the microphone, please state your name and address for the record, please. First Avenue. Uh, parking in my neighborhood, I find it's. I've been what really, block of First Avenue? I'm sorry? What block? The fourth block, First Avenue. 401 First Avenue. So I'm across the street. Five. Yeah. I'm across the street from the Library Square Park, and the parking over there, I have about four abandoned cars right now. Um, I have neighbors that have up to 10 cars. I have cars that don't move for two or three weeks at a time, and it's something that I've noticed living there for a while. And I see frustrated tourists drive around in the summertime and they, uh, you know, they, they look for parking and they just drive off and uh, it's just upsetting. I don't want these people going to another town to spend their money. So I, you know, it's kind of crazy coming from one who lives on the street, but I think parking really should be regulated over there. Um, no one uses their driveways. I have neighbors that have driveways that probably could hold 10 cars and they have no cars in the driveway. They have all on the street. Um, I watch cars sit there for up to two, three months, I call the police, they come by them with the registration, their cars are just registered, and then they drive off. They have towed a car before, but there's cars that have been sitting there since the summer. And I just, it's its not right. People are kind of abusing it. You know, I call Mike, the parking guy, 
and he uh, he had said that uh, he understood and he sees frustration, but I just something needs to be done in the summer. Uh, the other thing too is the lot behind the church is used on Sundays for the surrounding churches, about five churches in the neighborhood, and I think they have permits for that, but I noticed in the summertime during the week, it's just an open lot, and it's dust blows off, and it's a mess. Cars stay over the night, uh, overnight, and they don't move. Um, and it's just something that, it kind of has to be regulated. It's just, it's a lot of lost revenue to the town. Um, they're not paying the parking. So, I just, it's coming from someone who lives in that neighborhood, parking has to be regulated right there. It's just, it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And the abandoned cars are just, they're piling well, up. We'll and, and you notice that the cars, just cars that have like dents on the side of them. <laughs> I've called on that car. Okay. They got into an accident, it was abandoned. So, um, just a heads up, you know, something needs to be addressed. So, we'll get them told. No, I appreciate it. And I'm sure the city manager is probably going to email the police department to look into it first thing in the morning. I'll make sure I can legal registry. Tony, uh, Anthony, can we be quiet? You can't talk, you can't talk to the You can't talk to So it will be looked into first thing in the morning. And we do have two cars now with license plate readers where we're going around and no registration, we're towing. So we'll make sure your block's in. That I would say the first Wednesday, I think it's the seventh in March, uh, five thirty upstairs in the council uh, in the city manager conference room is a parking. Meeting. If you can make it, fine. If you can't, send either Mike Manzel an email. Oh yes, and we encourage it. So please, if you can make it uh, first Wednesday of the month, uh, 5.30. Great, thank you. And thank you. Time stamp. Take a little pencil. Louise, right. hey, 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 look, look, look. Everybody, if the cross conversation starts, I'm gonna start having people removed. Yes, sir. Okay. Louise Murray, 1604 Grand Avenue, Asbury Park. Getting back to the parking, not for, okay. This week, if I had a book, I went and had at least four violations early in the morning. Um, Rita um, called someone. This, what I want to do is clear this up. I know our police department is overwhelmed sometimes. I know that we're, they're, they're working day and night. I don't know who to call. I mean, here, you know, you have these little violations and then she called one day and they said, they said, well, the truck isn't big enough or the ordinance says this or, or it's only an inch into the yellow zone. Well, today it's an inch, tomorrow it's three inches. Then I got to call the cops and tell them to come over here because they're in my, you know, blocking my driveway. I don't know who to call. I am going to that meeting March 7th. I'm going to go to, but I don't know if Mike's responsible for taking the calls, if we're supposed to go through the police department, if there is a specific, um, if you have a, a crew or a task force that's just going to give out tickets, I don't know what to do. But I'll tell you something, if you don't curb it now, we're going to be in big trouble come the summer because they don't care. I'm half thinking that they should even start making parking spaces in front of houses without the numbers you know because you should see you yeah, thanks you should see how they try to jam four cars in one spot or they spread it out and you're lucky if you can get more than two you know what i mean they're like all over the place it's it's crazy so i don't know who to call you have well, any, any complaints about illegal parking should go directly to the police department. Not okay. All right. I accept okay. that. Now, an inch is not acceptable in Bradley Beach or Red Bank. Is Asbury going to overlook an inch? We should not. Okay. Good enough. I'll just say by the word of the mayor, come over here and ticket this one. I could have had four, four, four violations this week going to Mass. I'm going, oh. I put little notes on them, and I tell them careful parking, yellow zone, you know, that kind of thing, but I don't know. All right. You will forward that to the police, Mike? And it seems like, you know, it's not the first time we've heard this story. It seems like every two weeks we hear this story, but it's going to get we're, not, worse. we're not solving the problem. And part of the problem is the presidential 
I don't know what they're doing with their parking area, but part of the problem is the overflow from the apartment houses over there. I mean, I see people parking in front of her house that belong on Deal Lake Drive. So. The presidential has been notified that they have to fix their parking deck in there in the process of doing it, but it's not going to happen overnight. No, I know they've been working on right. it. Right. And so more information like Manzella at this meeting of the 7th will get, can give you more concrete information as far as okay. where they stand and anticipated completion date so we get those cars off the street. Okay. okay. Thank you, Louise. Thank you. Raymond Morano, 8th Avenue. I guess uh, parking is a subject tonight. Uh, I also want to know if uh, a truck, a box truck's been getting tickets almost nightly. Why doesn't the police department pull this guy in? We know where he lives. Recently, he changed his license plate to Indiana. It's in the back of the box truck. No registration, so I don't know if they registered them in Indiana. No license plate in the front. And he still parks every day on 8th Avenue. Why can't you bring somebody like that in? Why do you have to keep giving them tickets? I know you want to make money, but uh, it comes to a point where you have to bring the box trucks in. Why can't you tow them? We have enough money to get a place to put these trucks if you tow them. I'm sure you do now. I mean, you have to do something about it. They park in the middle of your house, and then they can't park behind it, you can't park in front of it, and then they tell you, well, you don't have, you call the police, they come. Oh, well, you have no lines on your street. I didn't know I had to have lines after 50 years for a parking space. <clears throat> but if that's what it takes, then you should mark all the spaces too. Because they park right in the middle of the street and they stay there two days. Two parking spots, yes. And the other thing I wanted to talk about is, uh, I don't know if that's Third Avenue or Second, where Holy Spirit is. That's a real scam. That's been going on for 10 years. When is that building going to be finished? You gave them uh, maybe four or five months ago. He paid a couple of, I think he paid like $22,000 for more space on the street. And what is he doing? Nothing. You know, this is the kind of scam that goes on in Lakewood. You have to be very careful, because this has been going on for 10 years now. He's never going to finish that building, and it's going to become a rental instead of a condo. You have to, I, I don't know how long, if there's a time limit for a building a building. That's at least 10 years. And nobody does anything about it. And I hate to keep calling all the time. You might as well give Louise and I a ticket book. I'll tell you. <laughs> I'm we, big they'd be, we would make so much money. I would pay for one. Because they think the yellow zone on 8th Avenue is a decoration, too. That's the other thing. They think because the apartment house is decorated now with flowers and bunnies, they think that the 8th Avenue is uh, that yellow line. They could park in it every minute, every day. I mean, like, they have to really hit hard. They can always get soft. And then when you call them, this is the thing I don't like. They have no knowledge of how many pounds a truck should be on the street. <coughs> Louise and I know. How come we know? How come they don't know? It says on the side of the truck, 12,500 pounds. That's more than it should be, right? John, you know that, right? No, no I don't believe so. Yeah, hey, me just sit right huh? here. Tony, 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 Tony. It's, it's supposed to, to be six thousand. Tony, Tony, Carol, Tony. Huh? That's, that's strike two. The no, next no, strike, no, the next strike. No, I'm no, going to have you removed. Home. Okay. You know I would be done. Okay, but you cannot we speak. So, I mean, like I think you should look into the Holy Spirit Lyceum building. We'll get back to you on that. Yeah, that's important, John. Because remember what happened that night. You were here. We'll get back to you on that. Uh, something tragic happened with the owner and he passed away so i don't know where it stands uh so for the i know holy where spirit. the box truck comes for, from for holy spirit so from holy spirit we'll, we'll have michelle look into it and we'll give it get you an answer on that you sure yeah Promise? have i revived to you no okay i'm not going to start tonight okay i'm not going to say tomorrow and michelle's not here so i don't know 
but we will get back to you. Hello, Council. Jerry Scrano, Long Branch. Um, I get parking is the big problem. It's just like that orange Corvette that parks on 2nd Avenue and never moves all summer and never gets a ticket with the orange cones. I think it's on the corner of Berg and 2nd. But you know what, Rita's Place, if you're three minutes after 11 when they change for street sweeping, they give you tickets. So I don't know why they're not doing a good job on that man's street. And I recommend he get a time stamp for taking pictures. That way he can prove his case. Okay, now, I asked you in the past, what are the goals for the city manager this year and what were they last year? I would like to know what departments actually had a decrease in their spending. Because for me, my phone bill was 125, I got it reduced to 110, and now it's $75, and I didn't switch companies. I got the cable bill, it used to be 161, they raised it to 199, I got that reduced to 139. The insurance company, car insurance, told me I used to pay 1032 they raised the price I switched company and now the car insurance for two vehicles is fourteen hundred dollars what are the departments doing to make these little victories count because Long Branch is bragging no tax increase for three years and they're having an election in May we have an election coming up what are you guys gonna say how you save the taxpayers money how was the city manager held accountable to get reductions. We're having more and more places come online. Of course, we're gonna have more revenue, but the old saying that Ben Franklin said, a penny saved is a penny earned, and no one's saving pennies. So could you tell me what the city manager's goals are? That's the most important thing to me. Are you done? I'm done now. Okay. The city manager's goals are, I'm gonna say, I'm not, trying to be smarter, I think, or set by mayor and council, Leader. where we set policy. Uh, so the policy that we set, the city manager enacts every day. We do not get involved with personnel. We do not get involved with hiring or firing. That's strictly his ballywick. And so but, but as far as the budget, we haven't finished our budget yet. We're, we're still going through the budget. And that is being done. And we were looking at every department and every line item. And can we do what Long Branch did? No. And you know darn well we couldn't do it because why, as long as we were on state Listen, aid. Listen, this is a better place. As long as we were on state aid, getting the transitional aid money, we could not reduce the taxes. Now that hopefully we're off, we're going to be able to stabilize and then reduce taxes. And I would argue that the money, say, I mean, didn't our, isn't our credit rating at, at the highest it's been in like 25 years under Michael? Right. 30 years. 30 years? Yeah. Okay. okay. All I'm saying is we have an election coming up. I want the numbers to look good. You got plenty of time to cook the books. That's all I'm saying. Good luck, everybody. Bye. I'm going to make you my campaign manager. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you, Jerry. Felicia Simmons, Sewell Avenue, Asbury Park. Um, I'm here tonight um, on behalf of the committee to save the Westside Community Center. Um, we're here. Um, it's pretty much, you can read our sign. Um, we're here as a study committee looking for the betterment of this town and this community, and specifically the West Side. Um, asking the city to move forward with um, action to help bring along the revitalization of West Side Community Center. Um, reading the article, knowing that the judgments are in, and knowing that we're in a critical time and space in which the community needs the West Side Community Center to be online. Um, sitting in recent meetings, different things to do, different activities, different things, and what the city is, is in loss of space. We need every inch um, in this mile by square mile. 
of a town. And then we will like to say thank you for the city to for their actions on continually pushing um, the boundaries and pushing for great things to happen um, throughout the city. Um, the West Side is in need of this right now. So um, thank you. And um, we're looking for speeded action. So thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Shonda Neal. I live at Three Manor Drive in Neptune, New Jersey. And I'm so excited about all the opportunity that we have discussed and planned and that we look forward to. And I'm grateful for uh, the council uh, taking uh, some time to consider our request for receivership. We're very happy that you have in the past discussed us but now we'd like to know uh do you have us on the agenda going forward uh we're not sure if you have been able to understand our urgency about getting receivership for the west side community center we really 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 need to do this as soon as possible too much time has passed the kids are suffering, the town is suffering, and we have such a great agenda going on. We have the momentum, now is the time. And so I would like to ask, are we a priority for the council? What do we need to do to be a priority for the council? Uh, does the council have us on an agenda for making a decision about our request for receivership? Can you please tell me where we stand? Uh, the council, as you saw in the article, received the tax letter just yesterday. Um, internally, we're still reviewing it. Uh, the assessor, myself, uh, the city attorney, and our tax attorney. With that, we hope to have just a review of it to the council for the March 14th or March 28th closed session. And then we'll start discussing what options are um, and possible action if there is any. But right now we just got the the decision yesterday. So you were deciding to not decide, make just kind of kick the can down the road until you got uh the the decision from the court just we yesterday. To, we had to wait we to have to. Oh okay. And we don't know what the West Side Community Center's next steps are gonna be. There might be an appeal. We don't know it's literally been a day. <coughs> Excuse me. So we have to have to review it internally before we can present something to the council of you know, what the staff thinks might be the best way to do it. It's been a day. Well, it is my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, it's my understanding that because you're a debtor that you can file for receivership regardless of the status of the tax lien. We didn't feel that way. Um, and that's what we talked about at a meeting probably in January. Um, okay. And we said that we were waiting, we wanted to see what the tax court ruled, they ruled yesterday. Okay. Okay, so we will be on the agenda? As okay. I said, we haven't reviewed anything internally yet. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Curtis Morling uh, from Jersey with Love, 115 Dewitt Avenue, West Side Community Center. Um, where, do, where do I start? So, my problem is not even a problem. If everybody is so ready to be involved and sit down at the table, I find it hard that we haven't gotten a call, um, haven't gotten an email, we haven't been able to sit down at the table together and have a discussion. Um, but my nonprofit, my New Jersey State certified nonprofit, just so we're clear, um, is in the building every day, spending money, doing what we have to do to get this building and the facility back online. So if you really want to help, let's sit down at the table and stop all of this talking because that's all that's happening is a whole bunch of this back and forth. So if we really want to be about this community center and the children, come have a conversation. 
Let's have a conversation. Let's sit down and work together. Because it, it's not happening. It, it's not happening. It, it, it's not happening. So if y'all want to be a part hey, so much, excuse me, could you face the camera? Come have a us? conversation. Come have a conversation. Sit down at the table and let's work on this together if that is the cause. I'm spending money daily. Myself, my other vice president, daily. We just spent close to $22,000 on air conditioning and heating units for the building that we have to repair. So if y'all really want to help, let's help. Let's come sit down at the table and stop all of this back and forth. Cause I'm get, I'm I'm gonna really get to the point. I don't even, I don't need to be here to do this. I come here because I want to be involved in the community. But I'm not begging people for money. I'm not gonna ask no more. We're gonna just get it done, like we're doing right now. Where we go when the $1,900 gas bill was at the center, and the gas was about to get cut off. Where was all the help in the in the help? And you want to do this? And all, where's all of that? Where's where's the help now? So, in closing. We're fine. I would love to have y'all help and assistance in getting this uh, facility back online. But from Jersey with love, we're going to do it with or without. Just to be clear, with or without. But I would love some help from the city. Thank you. Motion to close. Moving. Moving. Second. All in favor? All opposed. We'll move on to minutes. We have three sets of minutes this evening. We have executive session minutes of February 14, 2018, workshop minutes of February 14, 2018, and we also have the regular session minutes of February 14, 2018. Can I have a motion to accept the minutes, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We have the consent agenda. Resolution 2018-85, resolution approving special event applications. Resolution 2018-86, resolution authorizing refund due to overpayment for 603 Lake Avenue. 2018-87, resolution to refund over paid sewer. For 209 7th Avenue, 2018 88, resolution of refund over paid taxes for 1307 First Avenue, 2018 89, resolution of refund over paid taxes for 601 Heck Street, Unit 101, 2018 90, resolution to approve place to place license transfer, which is a reduction of premises for House of Independence LLC. 2018-91 resolution of the city of Asbury Park releasing performance bond for the Asbury Hotel and accepting the maintenance guarantee. Resolution of the city of Asbury Park, this is resolution 2018-92, releasing performance bonds for South Grand for, and accepting their maintenance guarantee. Resolution 2018-93, it's a resolution releasing performance bond for the Monroe development and accepting the maintenance guarantee. Resolution 2018-94, Resolution of Support of Authorizing a Sustainable Jersey Grant Application for Electric Vehicle Charging Stations. And Resolution 2018-95, Resolution Establishing Regulations for the 2018 Beach Season. Is there any item on the consent agenda that anybody wishes to remove from the consent? Hearing none, can I have a motion to adopt those resolutions, please? Move it. Second. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We're on to individual resolutions. Resolution 2018-96, a resolution amending temporary budget appropriations for the 2018 budget. Can I have a motion to approve, please? Move, Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2018-97, resolution approving payment of bills. Have a motion, please. Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? No. Resolution 2018-98, resolution awarding contract for design 
Contract Administration and Inspection Services for Bridge Street. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2018-99, resolution awarding contract to JC Contracting for Springwood and Atkins Traffic Light. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2018-100, resolution awarding contract for MTB LLC for the firehouse vehicle bay door lentils. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2018-101, authorizing change order number one to the contract for the Springwood Avenue Sanitary Sewer Project. Can I have a motion, please? Move, Move it. it. Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2018-102, resolution authorizing the County of Monmouth Mosquito Control Division to conduct aerial mosquito control operations within the city of Asbury Park. Have a motion, please. Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? No. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? No. Mayor Moore? Yes. Motion failed. Resolution 2018-103, Resolution of Mayor and City Council of the City of Asbury Park refer referring proposed amendments to the Springwood Avenue Redevelopment Plan to the City of Asbury Park Planning Board and directing the Planning Board to take certain actions pursuant to NJSA 48-12A-7A. Okay. Okay. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chat. Oh, I'm sorry, Clayton. <laughs> yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. W. Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? No. Resolution 2018-104, authorizing the City of Asbury Park to at implement competitive contract contracting process to procure vendors to install electric vehicle infrastructure and operate EV car share program within the city. <coughs> Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2018-105, resolution awarding contract for design contract administration and inspection services for D Lake Drive. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We're on to ordinances. We have ordinances for introduction 2018-10, an ordinance establishing salaries for certain employees within the city of Asbury Park, Monmouth County. Can I have a motion to introduce, please? Move it. Second. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing is scheduled for March 28, 2018. Ordinance 2018-11, an ordinance establishing salaries for certain employees with the city, within the city of Asbury Park, Monmouth County, New Jersey. Can I have a motion, please? Hold it. Second. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Abstain. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing is scheduled for March 28, 2018. Ordinance 2018-12, an ordinance amending and supplementing Chapter 4, General Licensing, Section 25, Licensing for Towing Businesses, Subsection 25.10, Towing and Storage Fees and Charges of the Code of the City of Asbury Park. Have a motion, please. Move it. May I have a second? Second. Councilmember Clayton? No. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing is scheduled for March 28, 2018. Ordinance 2018-13, bond ordinance providing for various improvements to Deal Lake Drive by and in the city of Asbury Park in the county of Monmouth State, New Jersey. 
appropriating $1,035,000, therefore including grant from the New Jersey Department of Transportation in the amount of $429,595 and authorizing issuance $605,405 bonds or notes for the city to finance part of the cost thereof. Have a motion, please. Move it. Second. <laughs> Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing is scheduled for March 20, 2018. We're now on to second hearing or second reading public hearing. <clears throat> ordinance 2018 1 is an ordinance authorizing and naming certain alleys located and under the jurisdiction of the city of Asbury Park, New Jersey. You can I have a motion to open this ordinance to the public? Move it. Second. Motion to close. Second. Second. Motion to adopt, please. Move, Move it. it. Second. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Ordinance 2018-4 bond ordinance providing for various 2018 capital improvements by and in the city of Asbury Park in the county of Monmouth. State of New Jersey appropriating $4 million, therefore authorizing the issuance of $3,809,521 bonds or notes of the city to finance the cost, of the cost thereof. Can I have a motion to open this to the public, please? Move it. Second. Saying none, can I have a motion to close? Move it. Second. Have a motion to adopt, please. Move it. Second. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Bond Ordinance 2018 5. Bond Ordinance providing for various serious utility improvements by and in the city of Asbury Park in the county of Monmouth, state of New Jersey, appropriating. Two hundred and seventy-five thousand, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of two hundred and five thousand dollars in bonds or notes to finance the cost of the park thereof. I have a motion to open it to the public, please. Move it. Second. Seeing no public. Hold on one second. Y yes, Rita. Is this the sort of plan one? Yes. 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 Just have one question. State your name and address for the record, please. Oh, uh, Rita Morano, Waite Avenue. Uh, what does our sewer tax money go for? Does it go directly to the sewer plant account, or does yes. that just get spent? It's a sewer utility. It pays for sewer operations. So why do we always have to borrow money for the sewer plant? It doesn't accumulate enough. Uh, no, we don't have cash on hand to pay for those sort of items. What? We don't have cash <coughs> to pay for those for the, this item. Uh, with the redevelopment, is that sewer plant going to be big enough for all those apartments? Yes. 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 Okay. But I, I thought the sewer plant money was to go when we pay our sewer tax quarterly. It goes into the sewer budget. It does. But it's in, yeah. But how come we're always borrowing? Well, don't we ever accumulate enough money to pay for anything? No, because in many years, plan. many years of non-liquidating, where we were running at a negative. The past two years, we've been running at a small positive, but not a very small positive, a couple thousand dollars. But we weren't losing money, and we didn't want to increase everybody's sewer bills as much as we were increasing taxes. So to increase taxes and sewer we thought would be ridiculous when we can get by with what we're generating and some of the new units coming on have helped with the tap-in fees or anything else and plus there's like 35 million dollars in debt being paid off that's, so, that, that's where I would say the majority of the money from the sewer plant is going paying off debt for the sewer plant so how much money how much is our bonded indebtedness on the sewer plant between thirty and thirty-five million dollars. Thirty-five thousand million. Million. Huh? Million. Million. That's besides what what else we owe, right? 
That's not the whole thing. That's for the sewer plant. Just for the sewer. That doesn't seem to go down. It hasn't. It has? It hasn't. Oh. It's just not running in the red anymore, Reed. I think that's what John's saying. We, we could increase everybody's sewer bill and pay it off sooner. But again, with increasing taxes, we didn't think that was a smart thing to do. I have one question. Louise Murray, Grand Avenue. Uh, regarding the sewer, uh, the sewer tax, with the new condos and all the other development that's going on, um, and tax abatements, <clears throat> tax abatements or whatever, does that affect the, the amount of taxes that they have to pay for our sewer, or are they getting a break? For the sewer plant bill, no. No break on the, the correct me, Michael, if I'm wrong. 200%, correct. No. What, what the, was that? I'm sorry. It's based on the usage. Right. It's, so, um, so, yeah. so any tax abatement it has no effect on the sewer bill? No. In the last, the mayor had said, up until two years ago, the sewer plant was operating at a deficit. Okay. So 16 and 17 was the first years that okay. they operated in, in black. Um, and if you read the Moody's report, which Debbie Mayor had alluded to, that was one of the things that they found was that the city's done very well getting this thing operating version. Now, I know I'm going out of the realm of the sewer conversation, but when it comes to tax abatements, what does that include? Does school, not include sewer. School taxes and whatever. Yeah, I'm going to have to rein you in and keep you to the sewer. <laughs> Thank you. Motion to close. Move it. Second. I have a motion to adopt Ordinance 2018-5. Have a second. Second. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Ordinance 2008-6, ordinance approving amendments to the Main Street Redevelopment Plan. Can I have a motion to open this to the public, please? Move it. Second. Motion Same. to close. Second. <laughs> have a motion to adopt ordinance 2018-6, please. Move it. Second. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Motion to adjourn? Move it. Second. All in favor? All opposed? We're closed. <laughs>